so practical resistors as the one that I've shown you um, they have these um, color codes on them and from these colors you can find out about the resistance I also should somewhere have another box in one of the many boxes that I brought today um, I have let me show it here I, I have uh, something like this so these paper cards and you can uh, turn some paper change the color here and then you can uh, read the values of the resistor and this is for three rings and there's also one for four rings where you can um, for, for different uh, series of resistors can, can move it to different colors and then just check what would be the value of the resistance of this resistor in this case. Ah, and what I forgot to show you is um, for, the, for the power resistor that we measured um, the resistance that we got here was something like 2.2, 2.3 ohms and I'm not sure if the camera can capture this Uh, there you can see it's 2.2 ohms so this fits to what we have measured okay and then for many circuits you also want to have resistors where you can change the value and they are called potentiometers um, they typically look like something like this one and then you can take a screwdriver um, turn some small knob let's say and change the resistance of this potentiometer to for example change the volume change some settings somewhere on the circuit okay so then we can take also the inverse of the resistor or the reciprocal value of the resistance and this is what we call conductance so 1 over r and the unit of this conductance is then 1 over ohm or ampere per volt and this is called Siemens after some other German engineer Werner von Siemens uh, who, who is also the name patron of our building of our electric engineering building building 9 is called the Siemens building um, and yeah what is maybe interesting and maybe maybe nice to know in you, you will find lots of American literature uh, where this unit of the conductance is not called Siemens but it's called Mo because it's 1 over ohm and if you read ohm backwards backwards then it turns into Mo and so what they use to write this is just some omega sign flipped over some omega sign on the top so if you ever see somewhere an ohm that is upside down it's it shall be the unit of the conductance is what we call Siemens and they call it Mo uh, which is I think a funny way to express this unit yeah? and so what this Ohm's law is about we we have some voltage voltage is trying to push some current through a wire through a circuit through some resistor and the, the, the more ohm we have the more difficult it will be for the for the current to go through and the more the voltage needs to push there, there are some nice simulations about this um, I think I've linked here the German one but this is the interactive physics education simulation department of the University of Boulder in Colorado uh, where I've also worked at the National Institute of Standards and Technology as a guest researcher about 10 years ago and so here you can check if you have more ooh, with audio if you have more more voltage um, you also get more current and if you have less resistance you get more current and vice versa and I think there's also this is only available in Germany or in German yeah you can um, close the circuit um, ah, and we have to switch on the source 
And why it's still not working, I'm not sure. Maybe my browser is too slow. Okay, this, this obviously does not work, but there are many online simulators where I can try something out like this. And then, um, and now the next question is how to calculate resistance. And to calculate resistance, you need something that is called conductivity or resistivity. This is some property of the medium. Um, you need length of the wire and you need the cross-section area. And there's also a nice simulation for this. And if I change the DE into some EN, then it should also hopefully load some English version. Yeah, so if you change, if you enlarge the resistivity, of course, resistance will go up. If you have a longer wire or longer resistor, uh, resistance will go up. And if you have more cross-sectional area, then resistance will go down. And with this, we could uh, maybe do another short experiment. Um, and I think, no, everything is still working. Oops. So I have, I have a copper cable. And the copper cable has, I've counted 50 windings. And if you bend it like this, and if you would take the, the good ruler, uh, you would find out, okay, that this distance from here to here is about 30 centimeters. And so one winding has two times 30 centimeters. This is what is meant here. And we have a cross-sectional area of 0 0.2 millimeter square. And so now, from this, if you would calculate the resistance um, using this formula that we had before, this one here, we need length, we need cross-sectional area, and we need this um, resistivity of copper. So um, someone needs to find out the resistivity of copper And I need octave. Uh, and my computer is very slow. Hopefully it will not crash. But it's not super hot today. So there's octave. And maybe it's loading. Okay, so let's, uh, let's check back. We have 50 windings. We have this as a diameter. We have this cross-section area. Uh, from this, we can calculate the length. And does anyone know? I think I've maybe opened it two times. Okay, but, but there we are. So length is 50 times 2 times 0 0.3, right? And cross-sectional area was 0 0.2 square millimeters. So how can I convert? Can I convert square millimeter into square meter? Well, okay, we don't need we don't need to if we have the proper unit for the for the conductivity. Okay, then we would just leave it like this. And so then, for rho we use. Say, say again, one point? 1.68. 10 power to negative 8, but this is probably not for, for meter and millimeter. So for meter and millimeter, what do we get? It should be the same value, but different po power exponent for the... Uh, so this? Okay, let me quickly 
uh, check it myself. There's no power. Spezifischer Widerstand Kupfer. So, uh, here we have ohm millimeter square meter and copper. And whatever this source is, we will trust it at this moment. Insert this value here. Ah, there, there we go. This is also what you have found, right? 0.0. .0 Yeah, um, like this. Yeah, uh, 0 0.171. Okay, yeah, I think it depends on what type of copper you have and how pure it is, let's say. But let's, let's use this. And so now if we say R is rho times the length divided by the area, yeah, and we have area in millimeter squared, but the rho is also given with millimeter squared, then we end up with something like 2.5 ohm. Okay, which could be that this cable has 2.5 ohm of resistance. So now if I try to find my camera window here once again and uh, remove my, my power supply and uh, try to find my multimeter back again. Uh, this one was over here. So now I can use the multimeter. Luckily it also has a stand. And switch it, turn it off once again. Um, old engineering rule devices work better if you turn them on. And now it can measure ohms. And it will show OL, which stands for overload. So now the resistance between the two terminals is too large to be measured. And if I connect them to each other, then it shows something like 0.1 ohm. 0.1 ohm is now, let's say, the resistance of the measurement wires and the connection here and so on. So it, it will not measure zero, it will measure something small. So if we start and measure our power resistor here from the beginning, then it will also show 2.3, which makes sense if you uh, subtract the 0.1 for the measurement cable, you end up with 2.2 ohms something that we also measured. Okay, so then let's take this cable here. And as I said, what we calculated uh, was 2.5. So if I connect it here and if I connect it over there, well, we do not get 2.5 but 2.7. This also somehow nicely makes sense in this case. Um, yeah, so nicely fits to what we calculated. <coughs> Maybe I should um, take a picture of this. Okay, great. So, ah, and the course name is in the chat saying hello zusammen, hello to everyone, hello back. Um, I have another copper cable. We could just try to do it again. So this is this is the other copper cable. Um, it has another uh, number of windings, approximately a diameter. If I try to show it at the same time here, uh, so uh, 56 windings, approximate diameter of five centimeter and less cross-sectional area, so it's a thinner cable. If we try to do the very same um, calculation once again. Uh, if I try to make this a bit smaller. So now it's, it's also copper, but the length is 56 times. So how can we calculate the um, what is it called? Circumference uh, from the diameter? PMC. P 
P times the diameter, so P times 0 0.05, 5 centimeter in 2 meters. So we get this length and the cross-sectional area is not 0.2 but just 0.1 and so if we calculate R once again we get 1.47 something like this so if I try to find my camera window here once again and measure mm. the resistance of this cable of the smaller one here so one terminal connected and the other terminal connected okay then we get 1.7 which also somehow makes sense right 1.5 uh, this additional 1.1 1.2 ohm for the connection um, this could also work this could also fit okay 